Hey guys, welcome back. Recently I made a video on the top 10 most powerful abilities in League, and as per usual, if I ever make a best or worst video, I always have to follow up with the inverse. So today we'll be talking about the top 10 weakest abilities in the game. Now, there happens to be a meaningful difference between strongest and weakest ability. The most powerful abilities in the game are such for their conceptual strength. It's unlikely for them to not be strong in some capacity regardless of their bounce. Seraphine's passive in a vacuum will always be one of the best in the game. Zed's W will always be one of the best, Kale Ultimate, etc. as they're inherently designed to be powerful. Weakest abilities, on the other hand, do correlate to bounce. Given League is a competitive game, all champions are bounced to be playable. It's not like Pokemon where you're allowed to get away with Sun Current being objectively useless. For the sake of fairness, all champions' abilities must be somewhat usable. In other words, this might be outdated if you're watching in 2025, 2026, or maybe even the day after it uploads. For example, Jarvan's Golden Aegis was easily one of the most irrelevant abilities in the game, and then he was given bonus AD scaling, turning it into a passing grade shield. That being said, some abilities are definitely more underwhelming than others on a conceptual level, so I don't imagine things changing all that much. Finally, I don't plan to include abilities that would be functionally useless outside of the champion's kit by design, such as Alawi passive or Yorick passive. Anyway, let's begin. Kicking off this list, our first ability will be Surfshark. Haha, <laughs> gotcha, didn't I? This video is sponsored by Surfshark VPN. Surfshark allows you to surf the web completely anonymously by stopping websites from tracking you, masking your IP address to keep your location and identity hidden so you don't get hit by targeted ads and the like. It also helps you bypass location restrictions. If, let's say, you're trying to watch a video or download something that's not available in your home country, you can set your proxy location to anywhere else around the world and circumvent that restriction. For all intents and purposes, they protect you while you're processing the internet. And given how these days, almost every electronic device interfaces with the web, Surfshark has an app for all platforms, PC, Mac, Linux, smartphones, smart TVs, game consoles, what have you. There are also a few other services they offer like Surfshark Alert, Antivirus, and Search, each taking care of their own things. So, if you prefer to consolidate all your internet and computer security softwares into one provider, then you can do so with this as well. They have a strict no-logs legal policy, which means Surfshark themselves will not save any of your data, so you can use the app without worrying that the app itself is tracking you. If you're still not using a VPN and would like to get one, then use my code VARSVERM via the link on screen for an extra 3 months free. There's also a link in the description below for your convenience. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring the video, but for now, let's talk about the actual list of abilities. Ability number one will be Teemo's W, Move Quick. Widely considered one of the most forgettable abilities in the game, as the name suggests, it lets him move quickly. After 5 seconds of not taking damage from enemy champions or turrets, he gets passive movement speed, and when activated, the bonus doubles for 3 seconds and stays in effect even if damaged by champions or turrets. On paper, this doesn't seem too bad, seeing as Hatimo is a lane bully, having even 40 or 50 extra movement speed than your opponent makes it almost impossible for them to catch you without a gap closer. But when compared to all other tempo boosting abilities, this is one of the least influential in the game. For comparison, take a look at Misfortune's W Strut. It's literally a direct upgrade since it comes with a huge boost of attack speed and a shorter mana cost. Although granted, she does lose a passive if she takes any damage whatsoever. Teemo's W is notably better in Wild Rift as it comes with a tiny dash, kinda like Vayne's Q Tumble. And while I never want to see Teemo have that property, like, ever, that is one way to make move quick not completely useless. Towards the late game, the speed boost is quite nice though as it breaks past 50% on activation, making him a very speedy boy. But considering he maxes last, you'll seldom if ever get to reap the benefits of it. Next ability is Elise's Human Q, Neurotoxin. I don't know if this constitutes cheating on account of Transformers intentionally having an ability that's the runt of the litter so to speak. They have 6 abilities after all so it makes sense for one or more of them to suck. Even so, Elise's Q is an interesting one. Neurotoxin deals damage to a single enemy. 180 plus 4% current health, then increases by 3% every 100 AP. While this doesn't seem too bad, especially with the cooldown of only 6 seconds, for a damaging ability, it's individually one of the weakest. The scaling on it is quite bad, both in base damage and AP ratio, despite being current health. It also has an obscenely high mana cost of 100 at rank 5. It might actually be one of the lowest damaging abilities in the game. For it to really matter, Elisa needs several hundreds of AP, and even then, any other damaging ability would also be better with several hundreds of AP. In her defense, she has damage on her passive, Human Q, Human W, and Spider Q, making her extremely deadly. So once more, it's understandable as to why Neurotoxin is so weak, but I think it deserves a mention on this list either way. Ability number 3 is Shivana's Passive. Shivana's Passive has to be one of the worst abilities in the entire game period, because half the time it doesn't even exist. She gets 5 bonus armor and magic resist, increased by an additional 5 with every Drake her team has. 
Assuming a standard league game has 4 drakes and 1 elder, maybe 2 on most, she can get a maximum of 35 armor and magic resist. That's hardly anything if you think about it, considering how much effort you have to put in to get to that point. She does get 20% bonus damage to dragons, but ironically, Shivana's not even the fastest dragon killer. So many other champs can do drake faster than her. The core issue of this passive is that it hinges on completely dominating the map and objectives, at which point you're probably far enough ahead to where the passive is just icing on the cake. Should the inverse happen, you essentially have no passive. 20% more damage to dragons is meaningless if you can't get near the dragon pit due to being zoned away from it. Worst case scenario, Shivana's passive is just 5 armor and magic resist. That is it. Unless you count passives that only exist to let you know of a certain mechanic like Renekton or Pantheon's passives, Shivana's passive is the absolute worst in the game, even more than the next champion I'll be talking about. Next ability is Kog'Maw's passive, a perennial entry in these types of videos. Kog'Maw's passive has become a meme for having almost non-existent impact. After dying, he reanimates into an untargetable zombie that gains 40% movement speed and explodes after 4 seconds, dealing true damage to all nearby enemies. On a surface level, it might appear inoffensive. A sizable chunk of true damage might be just what you need to finish off a target. But when you start to think of how it works in practice, that's when you start to notice the defects. For one, there's no scaling on this attack. Doesn't matter if you build AD or AP, this doesn't get any stronger. Secondly, with a 4 second timer, most enemies can prepare for the eventual explosion either by dashing away at the last second or using any heals or shields to withstand the attack. So while you do have 40% bonus move speed, it's extremely easy to avoid Kogma. Third, for him specifically, he's usually far away from the enemy team if and when he dies, meaning the only person he can realistically tag with his ultimate is the assassin who killed him, otherwise he's nowhere close to anyone to actually hurt them. Outside of Kogma, if you're determined to have a death pass of Zax, it's so much better since it comes with the healing per ability use, or if you want something offensive, you have Karthus or Scion, both of which are infinitely more usable since they actually scale. I mentioned this in the past, but one way Kogma passive can be made better is if he sticks on to someone kind of like a Yumi, guaranteeing that at least one person will take damage unless they have a Zhonya's or some kind of untarget ability. Then maybe it may not be an abject failure of a passive. Ability number 5 is Callista's W, Sentinel. I heard some people argue that Sentinel's not actually that bad thanks to the first half of it, but at the same time, I seriously doubt this would be anyone's first choice, or second, or third, or even fourth, or fifth. If Callista and her Osworn ally successfully basic attack the same target, that target takes a chunk of percent health magic damage, which is the part that makes people cope about the viability of this ability. 14 to 18 percent max health is nothing to scoff at, yes, but with the cooldown of 10 seconds per target, you're not going to see this proc more than once per fight, and again, that's assuming you and your tethered ally attack the same target. If Callista is trying to shake off a Xinjiao while her Nautilus support is all the way in the enemy team, she's never going to see that bonus damage. That's one more thing, it can only be procced by the Oathsworn ally. If it could be any of the four teammates, then yes, I'll concede that Sentinel isn't half bad, but it's only the Oathsworn. The active part has to be one of the most negligible abilities in the game. She creates a tiny spirit that patrols the set path back and forth, gaining sight of a small area in front of it. Vision is always nice to have, but the problem is, there could be a champion right next to it and they would not be detected because of how small that vision radius is. 99.9% .9 of people would much rather take Ash's Hawkshot than Sentinel, even accounting for the bonus damage. Ability number 6 will be Akshan's ultimate, comeuppance. Akshan is living proof that when you make something so powerful, you almost have to make the rest of his abilities useless. He's the opposite of Malphite, Shen, Kennen, and Taric, where they have ultimates that are too powerful, it makes everything else weak, while Akshan's passive is too powerful, it makes his ultimate weak. Comeuppance is a terrible ultimate because trying to find a situation where you can get the full benefit of it is exceedingly rare. He charges up for 2.5 seconds, gaining more bullets of his attack while locked onto an enemy champion. When he fires, each bullet deals damage that applies lifesteal at 100% effectiveness and scales based on crit, which can quadruple based on the target's missing health. When fully loaded and against a target who's sufficiently injured, comeuppance is basically an execute. What prevents this from happening 90% of the time is all the ways in which you can stop it. The easiest way is to simply hide behind anything that can be damaged by a basic attack. Minions, monsters, a fellow champion, or turret, blocking even 2 or 3 shots is enough to render Akshan's ultimate a non-issue. Alternatively, you can just attack him while he charges. Akshan's a sitting duck for 2.5 seconds, so he would never be crazy enough to use this at point blank range, nor would he want to use his attacks to get a low HP enemy target if someone else is nearby ready to attack him. He can use heroic swing to reposition himself, but that seldom makes it easier to one shot a target. For all intents and purposes, it's an infinitely worse Kaelin ultimate or even Jin ultimate despite the latter being skill shots. Mind you, I'm sure all of us are glad that Akshan's ultimate sucks. If it were good, on top of all this other bullshit, we'd have a serious problem on our hands, bigger than the one he already is. Moving on to ability number 7, we have Mundo's W, Hard Zapper. As someone who enjoys playing Mundo every so often, even after it received a much needed buff in 12.23, it is still one of the worst abilities in the game. When activated, he stores a portion of all damage taken, storing most of it in the first 3 quarters of a second and then a smaller amount for the rest of it. 
When reactivated, he damages all enemies nearby and recovers for half of the stored health or all of it if he damages an enemy champion or large monster. This ability unironically hurts you more than it recovers sometimes. It does almost no damage, has a long cooldown, one of the smallest hitboxes, requiring you to basically stand on top of an enemy champion to land it, and the total damage stored isn't even that much. Realistically, the only time Heart Zapper actually nets a profit is when you have 5 or 6 items on him, including Spirit Visage, but by then, the enemy team likely has Grievous Wounds, cancelling it out altogether. Heart Zapper can be decently effective against burst damage, since he can store up to 95% of the post mitigation damage, and if he tags a champion or monster, recovers all of it, effectively negating all of that burst and then some when paired with Visage. But you also have to account for the 8% current health cost to activate this, so in the early game you actually don't want to use W since you'd be helping your lane opponent kill you faster, which is why most Mundo players don't even put a point into it until they max out Q and E first. Considering we have Ws like Set, Mordekaiser, and so on that do a far better job mitigating damage, Heart Zapper is still one of the worst abilities in the game. Now if it behaved like Tom Kench's thick skin where it passively stored damage taken all the time, then I'd reconsider, but if it behaved like that, Heart Zapper would make Mundo unstoppable, so it's almost forced to be bad just to stay balanced. I don't know about you, but I kind of preferred Burning Agony more. It did more damage over time and could help him with Wave Clear in the early game. Although now he does have Blunt Force Trauma for Wave Clear and his crowd control resistance became his passive. In any case, easily one of the worst Ws in the game. Next one will be Chase's passive. I know I said I'll be avoiding abilities that are based on the champion's kit specifically, but honestly you could use Chase's passive outside of his own moveset. Whenever using your ultimate, you gain 40 movement speed and ghosting for 0.75 seconds. That's it. I sometimes forget he even has a passive with how insignificant it is. Prior to 11.18, Hextech Capacitor used to be 1.25 seconds instead of 0.75, which does matter due to being a pair of boots for a second and change, enough to make him just fast enough to run away or catch up to champions. But 0.75 seconds is practically nothing, he may as well not have a passive at all in that case. Even if you're playing someone who can spam their ultimate like Quirky, you still don't want this passive. Similarly to Elise, Chase's kit is balanced around having 6 active abilities, so giving him a meaningful passive would make him exceedingly overpowered. But you'd be hard pressed to even call Hextech Capacitor a passive. Frankly, I would rather have Shivana's passive over this, even though I stand by the notion that Shivana's passive is still the worst in the game. Two more to go, let's talk about Blitzcrank's W. Overdrive has always been a controversial one. On one hand, it's a fantastic steroid, tons of attack speed, tons of movement speed, and for a fairly long time too. It's the debuff that follows that makes it so divisive. Blitzcrank is one of the few champions in the game who debuffs himself, and no, don't say Urgot W or Zerath Q. If they can move at full speed with those abilities, they would be absolutely broken. Here's the thing, Overdrive is excellent, but it's not overpowered, even if you took away the slow it wouldn't be the craziest thing out there. Tons of attack and movement speed buff combos exist in the game, so it's not like he's breaking any new grounds whatsoever. Besides, it's a 75 mana cost and a 15 second cooldown, making it very committal. If you factor in that he's an engaged champion, you can make a clear case of the slow effect being there, but I personally believe they need to remove the slow from Blitz and bounce accordingly. No other ability in the game punishes you for using him. Why they ignored that for Blitz, I will never know. The problem with Blitz is that he's such a polarizing champion. Out of all the hook champs, his is the most straightforward but the most impactful when it does land. The idea with Overdrive was to make it so you had to land a hook within the next 5 seconds before you got slowed, but if you landed that hook, for the next 1.5 seconds your target would be chain CC'd anyway, so being slowed would have been a non-issue. If that was the intention, then why does the slow exist in the first place? Final ability would be Fizz's passive, Nimble Fighter. Fizz is permanently ghosted and takes 4 plus 1% AP reduced damage from every instance of damage, capped at half of each one. Okay, on one hand, anyone who's experienced the horror that his minion block would kill to have permanent ghosting. On the other, my god this passive sucks. Let's say on average, Fizz hangs around 1-200 to AP in the mid game. That means he takes 5-6 to six less damage from every instance. The nature of this passive makes it more effective versus quantity, not quality, and was intended to mitigate how much it would take from lane harass or minion aggro, especially anyone with damage over time. Usually though, you can't even tell the difference. Towards the mid to late game, it's all about one shots anyway, so in practice, the only thing Nimble Fighter does is allow him to ignore unit collision, but by the late game, minion block doesn't matter since you either one shot the wave or dash through them or fight outside of lane anyway, so Fizz is another champion who straight up has no passive sometimes. I might be wrong, given that it's all damage, maybe Nimble Fighter mitigates more than we think, but I highly doubt it. I would rather have Cassidy's passive. It has the same ghosting, but 10% reduced magic damage. Alrighty, that concludes the list. What do you guys think about my choices? Yay or nay? Also, do you think there are other abilities that I've missed? Feel free to share down in the comments. For now, if you enjoyed the video, it would be great if you could leave a like and subscribe. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, at Farsfarm, join my Discord server, and check out my Top 10 Strongest Abilities video if you haven't yet. But till next time, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.